Martin to O'Neill's Grill for our weekly fan and press luncheon with JMU football coach Everett Withers. I'm your host, Kurt Dudley, and it was a happy homecoming for the Dukes of JMU as they knocked off their longtime rivals, the Tribe of William & Mary, scoring 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter for a 31-24 triumph. Coach Withers, uh, you were using the analogy of going into the month of November as the fourth quarter of the season, quite frankly. And uh, you got off to a pretty good start in the fourth quarter of November to make the Dukes quite relevant at the time of the year that it's important to be relevant. Well, yeah, I think that's really important that you play well the month of November. And uh, I felt like, uh, you know, we needed to start fast in this month and, and get off to a, uh, a good start for our football team. Uh, you know, the chance to win four in a row, I think, is big uh, for our football team. So, uh, and to win homecoming, obviously, that's big. So, you know, all positives uh, going into game two in the month of November. As you've talked about this offense and actually the team in general, you're in search of the perfect game, but as you seek the perfect game, you're looking for excellence along the way. Actually, Saturday's was not a perfect game, but you had enough excellence in the fourth quarter to come up with a victory. Yeah, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I thought offensively we stunk in the first half. Uh, we did. We didn't play very good. And a lot of that had to do with rhythm and, and uh, you turned the ball over and some other things, some other factors. Uh, they played on a, a, a tilted field. We tried to play the field the other way. They played on a tilted field. They, they averaged start and drive on the 43 and ours was like the 24. So uh, it's hard to, hard to play offense when you start that way. But uh, in the fourth quarter, I felt like we got a rhythm. Uh, you know, and, and for whatever reason, our, these kids have done a great job of staying uh, resilient and, and fighting through adversity and playing well late in the game. Talking about the rhythm, particularly on offense, the rhythm of the defense is, uh, was pretty good, I think, on Saturday in particular. And when you look at the top four tacklers in the ball game were all linebackers, would that be maybe what you anticipated with your game plan of trying to stop William & Mary? Those particular positions getting a lot of the stops? Well, we had to play better at linebacker uh, this week. And, uh, you know, we had a focus to do that and play better and play more consistent. One of the things I thought we did well on defense was we communicated really well. Uh, our guys did a great job of getting ourselves in the right uh, front coverage uh, matchups for the run game uh, and the coverage game and the pass game. So, uh, yeah, our linebackers played real well. You know, obviously, you know, with that, you know, the linebackers played well, but Sage Harrell played really well. So, uh, uh, you know, heads off to, to the defensive staff putting together a really good game plan and uh, executing a really good game plan. As Sage Harold earlier today it was announced he was named the co-defensive player of the week. He had ten tackles, uh, or nine tackles that is, right. including four for loss and three sacks in the ball game. Uh, is your patience, you, you've been telling us that you're, you're being very patient with this defense. Are we starting to see that patience kind of pay off a little bit as uh, now if you look back at the last three games, they've had pretty, two, two very solid games defensively? Well, I mean, you hope they mature and grow and, and, and continue to get better. There, there are always ups and downs with, with youth. Uh, and, I, you know, and that, the second level of our defense is, is still pretty youthful. Um, you know, so those guys are growing each week. You know, we go out each Sunday and we correct things that we don't do well in the game previously. We still had, you know, 14 or 15 plays in that ball game that we went out yesterday and, and had to work on correcting. Uh, so it, it's always that, that journey, that process of, of, of trying to find a way to get better. I, I feel like, you know, again, I'll say this, and I said this back earlier, our front four, I think, is, is, is really talented. Uh, and we've gotten some some uh, uh, extra guys to step up, Simeon Robinson, guys like that are playing well for us up front. So uh, we just have to continue to grow in the, in, at linebacker and in the back end for us to continue to play well on defense. So you're saying you know, we, we go back to the Charlotte game and you said there were five plays defensively that really yeah. a big difference. Were there more against William & Mary? Is no, that what you're no, saying? No, okay. not necessarily more, but, you know, again, in search of, we're trying to fit the, you know, the plays perfectly. Uh, knowing that that's not going to happen. But there were some plays in the game where guys had individual one-on-one -on -one matchups and made a play, whereas we didn't do that the week before. And we didn't fit everything perfect, but we were better uh, this past week. But we still have a lot of work to do. Abdul Sabor had the majority of the offense. The total offense was 274. He had 45% of the offense. How do you think you defended him individually? Because after that, there really wasn't much of a threat for the Tribe. 
Well, well, I felt like uh, in the first half, we let him get out on a couple runs. Uh, we let him get uh, bounce the ball a few times. Uh, but I thought we did a great job at halftime of adjusting. Uh, once we felt like we bottled up the run and forced him into a passing game, I'm, I'm, you know, that's not what William & Mary wants to be. Uh, they don't want to really throw the ball other than early downs where they want to play action pass and take some shots. Uh, so we felt like we, we came back in the second half and did a good job of, of uh, handling a very talented running back. Dean Cheatham had a pretty good game for you once again. As you look at the tight end, situ the tight end position, is that one to be expected to have the type of games that he does in an up-tempo offense? Yeah, when we, uh, when we get uh, our tight end involved, and Dean has been a very valuable part of the offense, we want to be able to stretch the field with that tight end down the middle. Uh, you know, Dean's, uh, Dean's not our prototypical tight end that we want in that position, but uh, uh, he's done a, a great job. Uh, we hope to uh, continue to recruit uh, tight ends uh, at that position that, can, uh, that we can stretch the field with, but Dean's doing a, a very good job for us. About the game of uh, Daniel Brown, it was a career long or a career day for him in terms of uh, matching his career high with eight catches. First 100 yard receiving game of his career, the third that you've had this season from one of your receivers. A couple of weeks ago, he didn't have any catches, and he's getting right back into the flow now. Yeah, Daniel had a big game for us. They were giving us some one-on-ones with him on the backside, and really, to be honest with you, we didn't really get to it till the second half and really into the fourth quarter uh, where, you know, they did not roll coverage to him. They, they left the corner one-on-one -on -one backside with him. So we started to take, uh, take some shots over there with, with, uh, with Daniel, and, and he made some big-time plays, uh, one big-time third-down play over there on their bench and, and did a nice job. Thad Lee, um, in the game against Charlotte, it looked like the offense started to get greased a little bit when you started throwing to the edge, throwing to the boundary. Daniel Brown was involved in that this week. Right. You've had uh, Ravenel involved in that. Similarly, this week in the third quarter, that seemed to be the area where your rhythm started to, to become uh, really more into the ball game. Would, would you say that that would be a good assessment of the way things have mapped out? Yeah, well, again, I felt like that they start rolling some coverage uh, away from uh, the, the boundary. And uh, Daniel, again, had some one-on-ones over there. They gave us some things. And again, our offensive staff did a good job of getting us in the right formations that could get the one-on-ones backside. And Daniel took advantage of them. Daniel and Vad took advantage of them. All right, the Dukes with the victory. Again, 31-24. Uh, to 24. Let's turn it over to other members of the media here at O'Neill's Grill for our weekly Fan and Press Luncheon. Uh, Coach, I think Vad Lee said on Saturday that this team had a fear of losing, uh, and mm -hmm. we've talked about the team's effort throughout the season. How has the team's mentality not necessarily changed, but strengthened, especially in the last couple of weeks? Well, uh, you know, we, we talk about uh, success being contagious and uh, winning being contagious, uh, and we talk about, you know, what do you have to do to get that feeling every week when you go back in the locker rooms uh, at the end of a game and, and that's something that, you know, if you've been around it and you've been in locker rooms that have won and been in championship locker rooms, you want to you wanna always have that feeling. So that's something, that, again, that's part of this journey to grow this football team so when they start getting that feeling, they don't want to ever lose it. And uh, they'll practice on Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday so they can get that feeling on Saturday after a ball game. And that's... Uh, you know, uh, if you watch our team, you know, we struggled there in the first half. There was never any panic. Uh, in the third quarter, there was never really any panic uh, because they all know that if we just keep going and stay together that uh, we'll have a chance in the end. And, and, you know, when you have success the way we've had it, uh, we had it last week in the end, that grows some confidence. Uh, back to Daniel Brown, what potential did you see in him when you first saw him play and how is that potential at least some of it become reality, especially this past weekend. Well, I mean, you you got a, a kid that's over six four, and he's you know he's a size matchup for a lot of corners. Uh, he's a physical kid. Uh, he gives you the ability to throw the ball up to him in that one on one matchup if they're not going to roll coverage to him. So, uh, you know, he, he he presents the physical problems that most corners will have against him, uh, and and he catches the ball well, and he's a smart kid. Uh, so, and he blocks well on the perimeter. I, you know, we gave him we gave him the offensive most valuable player this week. Uh, not necessarily for the hundred yard game, because the way he blocks on the perimeter, and uh, to us that's that's 
as, if not more important than, than catching the football. And finally, one of your other players on Saturday, I believe, had this brilliant quote. He said that your team is like a tea bag. You don't know what they're like until they're put in hot water. Uh, what adjustments, though, does this team still have to make in these kind of close game situations? Well, I mean, we've got to clean up some areas in our kicking game. We've got to clean up. Uh, we had nine penalties. So, I mean, those are things that, you know, uh, good football teams uh, have, to, have to fix. Uh, and, and if we want to be considered a good football team, then we're going to have to fix them. Uh, you're not going to go into situations where you get to play longer than your normal schedule if you're still making a lot of uh, penalties, uh, penalties uh, and also kicking game errors. So uh, we, have to, we have to find a way to fix those so we can improve as a football team. Coach, at, at six and three, do you think at all about the playoffs yet, or do you kind of uh, talk to the team about that at all, or is it so too early? I, Again, somebody's going to have to tell me about the playoffs because I don't know anything about them. All I worry about is who we play next. Coach, it seemed in the, uh, the second half, your passing game really gained some steam with the play action. Talk about what you did offensively in the second half with the play action and how that, uh, how that helped your offensive passing game. Well, I, I, I think it goes back to tempo. Uh, it goes back to tempo and being able to get to the line, and run the ball some, but mix in those play action passes. And Bad and, and the receivers did a nice job of finding the holes in the zones. They went to more of a zone uh, concept in the second half, and we were able to find some holes in the zones. And uh, uh, again, hats off to our offensive staff with coming, going in at halftime and saying, this is what we need to adjust to. Uh, this is what we're getting. Our guys do a great job. And, 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 uh, you know, I, I've, I've, ca I've caught a lot of flack about having young guys on our staff. I, I'll take these guys over anybody, I'll, I'll tell you that, because they do a great job in uh, uh, adjusting and getting, getting our team back on track when we're having issues. So uh, I thought the play action pass was a big key in the second half. After you had Dean ejected uh, for two games for targeting, and then they had a player ejected and unejected, what was the explanation given to you, and, and what can you tell us about your conversation with the officials during that point in time of the game? I can't tell you much about what I said because <laughs> it won't go on the air very well. Uh, I was told that the guy forgot the jersey number, the guy that he was going to eject. I'll leave it at that. Seems like something you'd remember, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you're going to inject the guy, you don't forget the jersey number. Um, on a different note, how impressive was it for your defense when your offense was really struggling there for, for them to keep you in the game in the first half? Well, that, that's what we talked about at halftime. We talked about, you know, we, we, we stunk it up about as much as we could on offense in the first half, and our defense has kept us in the game. And I think that was a big momentum uh, builder and confidence builder for our defense. I, we really challenged them this week. We challenged them this past week about playing better in the, in the second levels of our defense, and uh, they took that challenge. Our coaches did. And our players did. So that was a big thing to be able to go into halftime and still be in a ball game uh, after uh, all the things that, that, that bad could happen happen in the first half and uh, be able to come out and, and be able to get back in the game in the second half. And I guess what does it say about your offense that you can really stink it up like that and still score 31 points and, and kind of turn it on when you need to? Well, I, you know, Hats off to, to William & Mary's defense. I mean, they're pretty good now. And, and I will tell you, they've got some talented front guys, good linebackers. Uh, they, they had a great plan. Uh, and again, uh, you know, hats off to them. And again, hats off to our offensive staff by going in the locker room at halftime and saying, they're stopping this, let's go figure out how to do this. And, uh, you know, to be able to do those things and still score the points needed to win the game. The four straight wins, you see, is, is the momentum thing, is that very real right now? Do you see, you feel your team playing, playing any different? I, yeah, just go off of that. Well, I, yeah. you, hope, you hope they see the things that have been working for us and continue those. Again, enhance them and make them better. Uh, the things we have to fix, we all, you know, as coaches, uh, it's one of the negatives about being coaches. Sometimes you see the, you see the negatives. And, and so last night, we spent a bunch of time trying to work on the negatives last night at practice. So, you know, I still see some warts. We have to fix the warts. And as long as we're working on getting better each week, then the momentum uh, of four games, uh, a four game win streak is great. And I hope our kids thrive off of it and it helps them work hard in practice. Yeah, I guess just 
playing and, and obviously still having errors, is that reason enough that you wouldn't get too complacent here? And I know you said it last week, but there's obviously still problems on yeah, uh, uh, well, plenty of areas. Yeah, there, there's, there's going to be problems. If you look at, uh, I, I imagine uh, uh, the New England Patriots are in the yeah. office right now talking about problems they had last night too. So uh, there, there are going to be problems in, in, in every football team. There's never a perfect game. So uh, our job is to try to continue to grow and get better and fix the things that, uh, that we can fix, uh, you know, whether it be the kicking game, penalties, you know, whatever they are, just to go back and try to work on them and fix them. On a couple of those punts, can you maybe – was there a common theme that they, they got through for any reason, or, or what did you see the, on film, I guess? The first one was a slow operation by our punter, okay. and the second one was a freshman in the back end that didn't block his guy. Okay. I, I know you put a lot of emphasis in punting mm -hmm. and, and, and on special teams in general. Um, I guess were you surprised that they that, that was a weakness for you in that game? They were the number one uh, – punt block team I think in the country one of the tops and uh, we just didn't execute so yeah I'm, yeah am I surprised yes I, I, I'm always surprised when we don't do things right hey coach for the fourth time this season you're going to play a team coming off a of bye this week yeah. uh, they're tops in run defense pass defense and total defense talk about Stony Brook's defense what you see and what kind of challenges they're going to present your offense they're, they're very big they're athletic uh, they, they fly around to the football uh, I think they're well coached. Uh, again, I don't know that staff very well, but uh, they've done a really good job of, uh, of, of getting a scheme together. They're, they have some unique pressure, uh, some pressure situations, how they how they blitz you. Um, but again, I, and they do a great job of, of different coverages, uh, mixing up coverages with disguises and those things. So uh, big challenge for our, our group this week. Uh, we're going to have to play a physical ball game. Uh, which, you know, uh, in this league, you, you nearly have to do that every week. Um, so uh, big challenges uh, for us to go on the road. And again, like you said, the fourth opponent that we play with a bye. Uh, again, I have to worry about our, our conference and scheduling on that a little bit, how that works. But uh, uh, again, another challenge that we look forward to. I know every game is important, but do you guard against a trap game at all with the Richmond game? I don't, I don't even know what a trap game is. Trap I, game? Yeah, I've never heard of those. I think are those in basketball. Or, I don't know. I don't. I never heard of a trap game. This is my first year in this league. Every game's important. With with them not exactly being a name opponent, um, it has, and they obviously, I don't know if it was an upset last year, but uh, has has that been discussed at all? Is there any revenge in the, in this game right here? I, their name is just as good as William and Mary's name is. I mean, I don't like again. This team is one of the best defenses in the country. You know, I don't know how you have this game not be real important. And, and I, you know, whether it was an upset, I wasn't here last year, so upset. You know, to me, I don't know if that was an upset or not. I want to ask you about their uniforms and kind of if you could kind of take me through that and maybe just start at the beginning when you first wanted to get them and, and why you wanted to to kind of get those uniforms in. You know, we. Uh, you know, you're always trying to do something, you know, any, any, any athletic program is, you know, you run it like a business and you're always trying to find a way to uh, help, help your business. And our business is really playing football games and recruiting. Uh, so it's about recruiting. Everything we do is about recruiting. Uh, so, you know, I've had, you know, hits on Twitter all day long from recruits about, you know, the swag uniforms and those types. So that's really important for us. Uh, and, and it was important for our players, but, uh, you know, we, we do it, and, and I'll, I'll, there's a group that I think is really important that, that people understand. There's a group called the Alpha Dogs. Uh, they're a group of uh, uh, guys that are very, very active with JMU football. They care about JMU football, and uh, uh, they helped us with the finances of a lot of things in our football program. And uh, hopefully they, that, group, that group has total access to us. Whatever they want, they got. And uh, uh, because they've helped us in a bunch of ways. And... Uh, Hopefully that group, uh, uh, they've, they've been very supportive and they've allowed us to do some things, jerseys, helmets, those type things that uh, we want to continue to do. Is that just like a booster organization? Uh, it's just a group of uh, very, very good supporters of JMU uh, football.
Okay. Uh, when was that first uh, brought up? I know it was very early. You said after the game, and yeah, when was? Uh, we talked. I mean, I've talked about it uh, from really from day one with our administration on what we wanted to do, and we're not done. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hopefully, in years to come, that we do a lot of different things with the uniform. Yeah, going back to the recruiting thing, um, mm -hmm. in your in your history and your your career, uh, just just little things like that, maybe not so little like that, but uh, nothing is little what, in recruiting. What is it? What does a thing like that do? Um, and where where do you see it? I mean, do kids talk to you about it? Just and just in general, where it, where it pays off, I guess. Well, uh, my son's fourteen. He gets all geeked up over it. Uh, I know seventeen and eighteen year olds love, you know. They call it swag, so uh, they like that stuff. So, again, uh, the more swag you got, you know, the more chance you got to get in a kid nowadays. You better have pretty shiny stuff to go recruit nowadays. If you don't, you're not getting them. Did you feel like the uniforms are stale here at all? Was that, a, was that an ask? A, no, I just factor? wanted to change them into what we liked. Uh, the, going to the all black, was why was that the, the, the scheme, I guess, uh, that you guys ended up going with? Look good when we talked to Nike about it. What, who was it? Uh, was it you? Was it other coaches? Any players involved in that? Or coaches, who, administrators, Nike. Okay. Um, the Duke dog on the helmet. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not really been involved in any logos you guys have used. Um, mm -hmm. Why? Why did you go with that? I guess. I, it looked good on the helmet. Uh, and, and the, I guess the final thing to unveil them just minutes before the game. Uh, why did you? decide to, to kind of go with a surprise like that? It's called marketing. <laughs> Go marketing. Coach, you've talked about how much you love playing on the road this season. Um, is it a kind of a positive aspect that this game in particular upcoming against Stony Brook is on the road uh, considering, you know, there's no distractions of homecoming and such? Uh, any positives from playing this game on the road? You know, I like going on the road. I mean, I, I like getting the team away from you know, some of the things that go on on campus. Uh, I can't imagine what Friday night was like around here last week. So uh, we put our kids in a hotel last Friday just because of that. Uh, so, yeah, I like going on the road. I think our kids like going on the road. They like being together. They like kind of having that, you know, us against the world mentality when you go on the road. So. Um, you know, I think it's important that you uh, that you lock in and our kids have a focus once we get on the bus, bus plane, whatever we do to get there. And, uh, that, you know, I, I think our kids like and like the process that we take uh, when we go on the road. I think I've had people tweet at me about the not going for two. Can you kind of explain that again mm -hmm. and, and just kind of walk walk us through that decision? Well, uh, it, you guys, you guys don't hear the headsets, so yeah. uh, nobody understands. We're talking the entire time. Uh, I think it was nine minutes, maybe ten minutes left to go in the game. And uh, really, to be honest with you, we were talking about going for two. And uh, as we got down there, we said, you know what, we're playing good defense. Let's go for one. We're going to get the ball back. Let's don't go for two and put us down two scores and miss it, not make it. My job was to not have to score twice being down nine. Uh, so we went for one. We figured if they scored, uh, we still have a chance to go down with four minutes left and score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion. So at some point in time, one, you know, one way or the other, we we're going to go for two. Uh, I wanted the momentum to stay with our team. I did not want to score, miss a two-point conversion, and then have to get the ball back twice to go win the game. You said you're confident in your defense, mm -hmm. and that was the reason. Uh, going for two and not making it, wouldn't that – Put more confident, put more on your defense, and you get a stop that way. To, I don't think so. I, okay. I, my guard was worst case scenario. I was thinking worst case scenario. If we did not make it, we're down by two two scores. Okay, thanks for explaining. I got one thing to say. Uh, we had five thousand eight hundred students sign up for tickets for the game, and only five hundred students showed up at the game. And I got a problem with that. So uh, whatever we got to do, students, to get involved in JMU football and get to the, get in the stands and stay there, we got to get that done. That that's embarrassing. So uh, and that's homecoming. Only 500 students show up to the game. I got an issue with that. So uh, whatever I talked to our AD this morning, that's a bad problem. We got to fix it somehow. Thank you. I guess right. I guess I'll follow up on that. Did you? Uh 
Did you kind of notice that during the game? And it, it was that. A, I don't notice students during the game. I don't you? know his fans doing the game. I just get the, the I get the so, stuff on Monday. Yeah. Who who gave you that? Uh, like a, a readout uh, or something? My administrative I guess. assistant and our athletic director. Okay. And what was your initial reaction? Just shock, I guess, with, with that low number. It's not good. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you, gentlemen. As the Dukes, they'll be on the road this weekend facing the Stony Brook Sea Wolves, and kickoff will be at 1 o'clock in uh, Stony Brook on Long Island. Thank you for joining us this week for the Coach Everett Withers uh, Fan and Press Luncheon here at O'Neill's Grill. We'll be back next Monday, and in addition to Coach Withers, we'll also have women's basketball coach Kenny Brooks and men's basketball coach Matt Brady as the basketball season begins November the 14th with home games, the women facing UCLA at 1 o'clock on that Friday afternoon, and the men against the Virginia Cavaliers that evening at 7 o'clock. Have a great week, everyone.